Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and we're on to our video lecture over 2.1. 2.1 introduces graphs and tables for categorical data. Remember, categorical data is also known as qualitative data, so don't forget qualitative and categorical, same thing. Um, things like color, if you're male or female, things that are put into categories, characteristics that aren't uh, numbers that you can do math to. So, our objectives. Construct and interpret a frequency distribution and a relative frequency distribution for qualitative data. Believe it or not, these are just tables. Okay, We're going to take information uh, that was presented in lists or however you collected it and put them into tables. So that's what a frequency distribution and a relative frequency distribution is. From those distributions, we'll be able to construct and interpret bar graphs and Pareto charts. We'll also be able to construct and interpret pie charts, which we've seen before, I'm sure. We'll also do cross tabulations, um, which is when you ask multiple questions, a group of people multiple questions, so you have uh, characteristics that you cross. And then um, we'll look at a clustered bar graph from uh, that you create from those cross tabulations. But remember, a cross tabulation is just another table, uh, very much like a frequency distribution, but with more than one uh, characteristics or characteristic, excuse me. So, frequency distributions are first. Imagine, uh, take a look at this this uh, set of data here. What we've done here is we surveyed 20 students, and we've uh, asked them what the career, or uh, what career they want to have after maybe being a student. So you can see the list of answers here as that goes down, and the student number is just maybe, uh, you know, the first student said doctor, the second one said scientist, the third one said military officer, and so on. So, as we can see, this, this data set is, you know, not very organized. This is just what we wrote down as we surveyed 20 students. So, we might want to come up with what's called a frequency distribution. So, we take this information and put it into this table where we, look, we list the categories that have uh, been uh, put up. So, these are the, var uh, so the variable would be what your career is. And then the observations we got were doctor, scientist, military officer, lawyer, and athlete. So what we did was we just decided to, sh to show the frequency or the count for each uh, variable. Instead of listing it like here, it's much more organized in this frequency table right here. And you get all the same information that you got from the previous table. Now relative frequency, relative frequency just means relative to the whole, okay? So it's still a frequency, but it's basically a proportion or a percentage. Now the way that this uh, book is going to do it is going to list it as a proportion, and I'll show you what that is. So we to, take, to do a relative frequency uh, table or a distribution, you need to have the frequency distribution first. So see the table here, we have the frequency for uh, the doctor, scientist, military officer, lawyer, and athlete. To get the relative frequency, what you do is you take each frequency and divide by the total number sampled. To figure out the total number sampled, if you didn't, if you didn't know already, you add up the total of the frequencies. 6 plus 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 is 20, and that's why they're dividing each number by 20. So 6 divided by 20 is 0 0.30. If you wanted to, you could list that as 30%. But relative frequency is a relative to the whole. Now, every time you put up a relative frequency table, since you divided by the total, if you add up all the relative frequencies, it should always add to one. If you do a, if you list them as percentages, they should always add to 100. All right. Now, from these tables, like a frequency table or a relative frequency table, we can create what's called a bar graph. So, on the horizontal axis. You put each category, so on the horizontal axis on the bottom, you're going to see doctor, scientist, military officer, uh, lawyer, and athlete down here. And then the vertical axis is uh, the frequency. So the higher the bar, the more people that want to be a doctor, uh, the five people want to be a scientist, five people want to be a military officer, and so on. So you can see here that athlete is the least popular, while doctor is the most popular. From this, we can also use the same uh, relative frequency table to create a bar graph. And notice, it's very much the same shape, very much the same thing, but instead of frequency on the vertical axis, now we have the relative frequency, which is 
30%, 25%, 20%, 15%, and so on. It's the same graph, but with just a different unit on the vertical axis. A Pareto chart is just a bar graph, but we put the, the data in order from smallest to least. So the bar graph that they were doing before was actually a Pareto chart. This would be um, the, a Pareto chart of the number of yards people threw for in a season, and it goes from smallest to largest. Pareto charts aren't really necessary, but sometimes we might want to organize it in order. It's not required, though. Okay. Pie charts. Pie charts are another thing that are pretty common that we've seen um, in, uh, uh, sorry, in newspapers, websites, what have you. Now, what I just skipped was all this math involved in figuring out the degrees for each section. Don't worry about that. We're not going to have to do that. We're going to use uh, Microsoft Excel to, have us, uh, to help us create um, pie charts. So all we're going to have to worry about is coming up with, with, once again, the relative frequency and from there, uh, or even the frequency table, and from there we'll be able to copy and paste that and create a pie chart which looks like this, okay? So before we had the bar graph, or we can have a pie chart, which pretty much says the same information. If you look at this, you can see that doctor is by far the most popular and athlete is the least popular. Okay, now cross tabulations. This is a tabular method. Once again, we're creating a table for um, summarizing the data into two categorical variables. So I think the one that they're gonna ask here is um, uh, male and female and their emotion after 9-11. I think this is a table from the book where they mentioned, they asked people how they felt after what the 9-11 attacks. So the two different variables are male and female. And then the, uh, the, sorry, the first variable is male or female. And then the second variable is the emotion. And they listed one, two, three, four, five, six different emotions that they could have felt. So they crossed these variables with each other and they put this into a table. We're gonna do a much simpler cross tabulation where we cross uh, uh, two variables, but we're just gonna have two, two um, observations for each variable. This one has two observations for male and female and six different observations for emotion. So um, cross tabulation is a good way to, to look at observations with two different variables at the same time. From that, we can create a clustered bar graph. Once again, we're gonna do this in uh, Excel. I'll teach you how to do that in class. But um, you can see whether it be relative frequency or, sorry, frequency or relative frequency, that the clustered bar graph shows the, the, the percentage or frequency of sadness, or sorry, of each emotion based on male and female. So you see that the males are the green, the females are the, the tan, and you can see that Men mostly felt anger. Uh, anger was the most popular emotion for males, while sadness and and um, anger, disbelief were kind of all a tie for females. So cross cl clustered bar graphs and cross tabulations are a good way to to look at data for two variables at the same time. And that's it. That's the all the types of graphs that we're going to talk about in this section. The ones that we're going to do the most definitely are going to be your bar graphs, which I'll show you here. Remember the, the observations are on the vertical axis, or sorry, on the horizontal axis, and um, and the frequency or relative frequency on the vertical axis. You also need to be able to create frequency tables, and then from there, relative frequency tables. Just to remind you, the relative frequency is each frequency divided by the total gives you pr proportion or percentage, and that's what relative frequency is. So 2.2 will be coming for graphs on quality or quantitative data. Till then, we'll see you next time.